you're a scientist, an exo world class scientist, planetary scientist, astronomer. Uh, now, I'm a bit of an idiot <laughs> who likes to ask silly questions. So some questions are a little bit in the realm of speculation, almost philosophical, because we know so little. And one of the awesome things about your work is you've actually put data and real science behind some of the biggest questions that we're all curious about. But nevertheless, many of the questions might be a little bit speculative. So on that topic, uh, just in your sense, do you think we're alone in the universe, human beings? Do you think there's life out there? Well, Lex, the funny thing is, is that as a scientist, I so don't even want to answer that. You, you really? No, I will answer it though. Yeah. But I just love to <laughs> You're say- You resist it naturally. Yeah, we naturally resist that because yeah. we want numbers and hard facts and not speculation. But I do love that question. It's a great question. And it's one we all wonder about. But I have to give you the scientist's answer first. Yeah, sure. <laughs> which is, we'll have the capability to answer that question. Soon even, starting soon. How do you define soon? How do I define soon? What do you, so much happened in the last 100 years. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right, right. And there's a difference, right? If it's 10 years or 20 years or 100 years. Yeah, th there's a difference in that. Well, soon could be a decade or two decades. And the answer? By the way, journalists usually don't like that or the people want like tomorrow, they want the news. But what it's going to take is telescopes, space telescopes, or very sophisticated ground or space tel based telescopes to let us study the atmospheres of other planets far away and to look what's in the atmospheres and to look for water, which is needed for life as we know it, to look for gases that don't belong that we might attribute to life. So we have to do some really nitty gritty astronomy. So the, the promising way to answer this question scientifically is to look for hints of life. That's where like many of your ideas come in of what kind of hints we, might we actually see about this life? Right, right. That's exactly what we need to do. And I like the word you chose, hint, because it's going to be a hint. It's not going to be a 100% yay, we found it. And then it will take future generations to do more careful work, to hopefully even find a way to send a probe to these distant exoplanets and Check. to really figure yeah. this out for us. I mean, we'll talk about the details. Those are fun, but like, uh, but zoom, back to the speculation. The maybe? zoomed out yeah. big picture. The zoomed out big picture question. is yes. I believe absolutely there is life out there somewhere, mm -hmm. because there, the vastness of the universe is incredible. It's so breathtaking. When we look at the night sky, if you can go to that dark sky, you can see, you know, many, many hundred, or even if you have good eyesight and you're somewhere very dark, you could see thousands of stars. But in our galaxy, we have hundreds of billions of stars, and our universe has hundreds of billions of galaxies. So think about all those stars out there. And even if planets are rare, even if life is rare, just because the number of stars is so huge, things have to come together somewhere, someplace in our universe. Yeah, it's so amazing to yeah. think that somebody might be looking <laughs> up on another planet in a distant galaxy. Oh, I have to interrupt your solstice. reverie and get back to, in our lifetime at least, the short term. <laughs> yeah. We have to, we only have the nearest stars to look at. It's true that there are so many stars, so many hosts for planets that might have life. But in the practical question of will we find it, it has to be a star quite close to Earth, like a few light years, tens of light years, maybe hundreds of light years. And by the way, yeah, you've introduced me to a tool of uh, eyes on exoplanets, I think, uh, that NASA has put together. Eyes on JPL. exoplanets. It's a eyes on great software. You can That's download so cool. It. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, can you give a sense of like who our neighbors are? Like you said uh, hundreds of light years. Like how many stars are close by? And like what? What's our neighborhood like? We're we talking about five, ten stars that we might actually have a chance to zoom in on? I'm talking about maybe a dozen or two dozen stars. And those are, that's- With been... planets that look suitable for us to follow up in detail. For life, right. okay. But one thing that's really exciting in this field is that the very nearest star to Earth, called Proxima Centauri, it's part of the Alpha Centauri star system. Cool name, by the way. Yeah, I mean, Proxima. Whoever names them. Nearby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, Nearby. but it sounds cool. But Proxima, Proxima. Proxima Centauri appears to have a planet around it. That's an Earth ma about an Earth mass planet in the so-called habitable zone or the Goldilocks zone of the host star. So think about how incredible that is. Like out of 
all the stars out there, even the very nearest star, has planets and has a planet of huge interest to us. 